I'm exhausted just watching that. <laughs> well, that's a group of flamenco dancers being put through their paces by a lovesick choreographer in a sexy new Spanish film called Carmen. Carmen is just one of five movies we'll be reviewing on the special sneak previews we're calling Movies to Watch For. I'm Neil Gabler. And I'm Jeffrey Lyons. Now, Movies to Watch For are films which, for a variety of reasons, like too little publicity or bookings in obscure art houses somewhere or lack of having big-name stars in them, may somehow get overlooked or ignored when they're up against the bigger Hollywood pictures. On this special Movies to Watch For, we'll be reviewing five films that either Neil or I think deserve your special attention. Well, our first movie to watch for is called Experience Preferred, but Not Essential. It's a whimsical little, and I emphasize the word little, English comedy about a frumpy college co-ed who spends her summer vacation waitressing at a seaside resort. While the other waitresses are all having their romantic summer flings, our poor heroine is wondering whether she'll ever get a chance to have a fling of her own. And in this scene, she's pondering her dilemma when the resort's glamorous hostess drives by. Hello. What are you up to? Nothing, really. I've got the day off, but I'll never know what to do with it. Want to come for a ride? Where are you going? Get my hair done, do some shopping. Nice car. It was a present. What is it about you that makes people keep giving you things? Not my O-levels, Annie. <laughs> How much longer have you got at the hotel now? Only a few more weeks. I think I might move on soon. It's time I was back in the city. New places. Something always turns up. Or someone. <laughs> By the time you're my age, you'll look like Wally. Didn't you buy anything? Just a book. I need every penny I can save. Grant won't stretch very far. Will it stretch to a cup of tea? Yes. <laughs> you know, Mike's taking quite a shine to you. I like him a lot. Mm, this has not gone unnoticed. I expect you've known lots of men. Very discreetly put. Don't you ever want to get married? Have a husband of your own? Well, I've got one somewhere. I got married when I was a model, about your age. He was a very, very nice guy. What are you looking so miserable about? I'm the only one I know here who doesn't have a past. Time will rectify that. We all get one in the end. <laughs> well, later, she begins creating a past for herself when the resort's cook starts showing some interest in her. And here, on a walk in the picturesque Welsh countryside, the cook tries to find out a little more information about his new girl. Where did you like best? Oh, Japan, America, they were great. But after a couple of months at sea, I was starting to give the cabin boy funny looks. <laughs> anyway, what about you? Don't know any cabin boy. Oh, very funny, very droll. The girl's a comedian. Annie Simpson. This is your life. Go. Born, went to school, grew, left school. Stop me when it gets boring. It's boring. <laughs> Seems daft now. Three more years to study, and then I go straight back to school again. I feel like my life will be over before it can begin. Oh, yeah. I can see the wrinkles ravaging your face already. Here, take my arm. I'll help you along in case your tired old legs collapse. Later at work, the cook woos her with a rose. Come on! Stop thinking of me as a potential sex fiend. At heart, I'm really a geisha guy. I'll woo you with candlelit dinners and constant attention to your every whim. Until you're desperate to unveil the secret delights of my magnificent body. <laughs> oh, would you love me? Eh? Hey, <laughs> well, you could fit the plot of experience preferred but not essential in a pillbox. But whatever there is is brisk, 
lively, and thoroughly charming. What it does best is capture wistful little moments. And if you remember anything from this movie, it's likely to be the shy, twisted smile of its star, Elizabeth Edmonds, or the wonderful bustle of the seaside resort, or the waitresses getting together to sing some doo-wop. As I said, these are little things. When it's serious, the film steers clear of melodrama. And when it's funny, it steers clear of broad humor. But it's the little things that make experience preferred but not essential a nice little movie. And little is the key word here. This yes, which I've already said ten times. That's right. <laughs> this picture doesn't try to bowl you over with grand things or even silliness. It just tries to show a brief slice of life in a girl's life, how she comes of age, and doesn't try to do it in silly ways, which too many movies about that subject yeah, do. You know, I, I love the British comedies of the early 1960s with Peter Sellers and Terry Thomas. There's a name from the past. And I think this represents a new kind of British comedy. This and Gregory's Girl and Local Hero are films that dispense with plot almost completely and concentrate instead on little quirks of Behavior. There's a sweetness about this picture. It goes from one incident to the next, to mm. the next, to the next, and you fall into its rhythms right, right away. It's a very easy little picture to love. Well, let's go on to something completely different now. Our next movie to watch for is Carmen, and despite its title, Carmen has little to do with the famous opera by the Frenchman Bizet. No, this is a dance adaptation, an entirely Spanish movie in temperament, style, and attitude. The setting is contemporary. Most of Carmen takes place in a flamenco dance studio in Madrid where the school's director and choreographer, played by flamenco dancer Antonio Gades, is searching for someone to dance with him in a flamenco adaptation of Carmen. He finally finds a fiery young dancer to play the title role. And in this scene, dressed in red, she rehearses the opening sequence. You can't sit still when that's on. Later, life has imitated art. The choreographer has fallen in love with his Carmen, and in this passionate sequence, they dance together in classic flamenco style.
forth passion. Carmen sizzles and pulsates with rhythms and movement. It brims over with seething passion and the doomed love of a man, the choreographer, who has fallen prey to his own art. Bizet's classic French version of Carmen is also parodied briefly because only the Spaniards really know about flamenco and passionate machismo. And there's that magnificent dancing. Rarely has the real flamenco been captured so brilliantly on screen. Even if you're no more familiar with flamenco dancing than having seen it on an Ed Sullivan show years ago, the fiery emotions of Carmen will knock you over. Well, you recommended that I go see this film, and I have to admit I went with a certain hesitation Why? because, well, the idea of, of seeing flamenco dancing is about as exciting to me as watching paint dry. Not to me. But about 15 minutes into this movie, I realized that this dancing is so passionate, so sensual, and so expressive that it really got me, sort of like a Spanish flash dance. It's really seeing passions and emotions just jump out at you from the screen. You can't sit still during this movie. Even if you hate flamenco dancing or know nothing about it, you'll sit there tapping your foot and really getting involved in these furious emotions on screen. And from start to finish, this picture sizzles. And, and I think one thing we have to say that also makes it work is that there is a story to this movie outside of the dancing. That's right. The story of the choreographer falling in love with the woman that he's chosen to play Carmen. And, and we get the passion of that relationship expressed in the dancing. So th there's a double passion it's here. It's told on several different levels. You can take this film on many different levels and give it many different interpretations. But the point is that it works on all those levels. It really thrives. I think the point is that this is a pretty sexy movie. Well, it sure if is. You, if you see it in that it spirit. It sure is. Well, the next movie we think you should watch for was made in France by courageous Polish director Andrzej Wajda. It's called Danton, and it takes place during the Reign of Terror after the French Revolution, when the dictator Robespierre decided to crush his popular political rival, Danton, once and for all. And in this scene, one of Danton's nervous supporters urges him to take action against Robespierre before Robespierre can arrest them both. Moi, je fais venir tous les sections en armes et ensuite la foule envahit la convention pour assommer tous les gros légumes. Les comités en tête. Formidable. Je te souhaite bonne chance. Mais tu comprends pas ce qui se passe. Robespierre est sur pied. Dans une heure, le comité se réunit et ils vont nous tomber dessus, j'en suis sûr et certain. Alors avec ce que t'as sur la conscience... Qu'est-ce que j'ai sur la conscience Quoi, par exemple Qu'est-ce que j'ai oh, Rien de précis, rien de grave. Seulement suppose qu'on vienne à parler du grand juge et que ton nom soit cité. C'est vite fait. Danton voulait la dictature, mais parfaitement Une rumeur, une seule, était foutue Qui osera me condamner Qui Comment qui Mais le comité, bien sûr Robespierre n'est plus malade Ce petit comité ridicule Vas-y, t'es si sûr de toi Écoute, Lesperman, réfléchis un peu. Moi, l'homme du 10 août, j'ai le soutien de toute la population de Paris. Georges, c'est maintenant ou jamais, crois-moi Maintenant ou jamais Alors Ce qui m'étonne, c'est que tu sois encore libre. C'est un miracle, un miracle suspect. Mais je comprends, tu es mon ami. Je ne peux pas arrêter mes amis. J'ai une chose que Robespierre n'a pas. C'est le vieux cordelier. Avec ce journal, j'ai une influence 100 fois plus forte que ce charlatan poudré. Ça te rassure well, Danton's a little too confident there. Later, he is arrested, and by intimidating the French Chamber of Deputies and by threatening Danton's supporters, his enemy Robespierre pressures the chamber into bringing Danton to trial. If Danton is found guilty, his punishment will be death. And Danton's only hope in this kangaroo court is arousing the French citizenry in his behalf. And here, at his trial, he makes a last appeal to the citizens. You know that we are innocent! But it has no importance for you! Ça n'a aucune importance puisque vous obéissez à des ordres, des ordres donnés. Mais Fouquier ne sait bien de quel ordre il s'agit. Quels sont ces ordres, Fouquier À vous le maintenant J'aurai donc moi aussi, <rire> j'aurai donc moi aussi les honneurs de l'acier. Mais écoute-moi bien, Fouquier, écoute-moi bien. Si tu veux me couper la tête, l'homme qui t'a donné des ordres, son corps viendra bientôt pourrir près du mien. Il le sait comme moi. Il me tue, il en mourra. Vous voulez m'assassiner et faire disparaître toute trace Vous avez interdit aux journalistes de prendre des notes et je vois les greffiers assis sur leurs chaises, les bras croisés. Eux aussi ont reçu de l'ordre de ne rien écrire. Tout doit s'évanouir, tout doit disparaître. Et vous voulez que je disparaisse aussi Non, je ne disparaîtrai pas. Non, je parle et je parlerai jusqu'au bout car je suis immortel. Je suis immortel parce que je suis le peuple. Le peuple est avec moi. Et vous, les assassins, et vous, les assassins, vous serez jugés par le peuple. 
Mais je parle quand même et je parlerai. Peut-être l'air de cette salle retiendra-t-il l'écho de ma voix qu'on étouffe. And that was Gerard Depardieu, and I think that's one of the greatest performances that he's given in his career. Now, Danton was based on a Polish stage play, and I'm not going to deny that it's stagey and talky, which put me off at first. But Danton ultimately does three exceptional things. First, it makes the French Revolution seem as immediate as today's headlines. Second, it's, it's powerful propaganda, because Polish director Vida is obviously using the excesses of the French Revolution to comment on recent events in Poland. And third, in Robespierre, the film creates one of the greatest villains I've ever seen. Robespierre is pure evil. So even though Danton may seem arty, what it all comes down to, whether Vida intended this or not, is an old-fashioned contest between evil, Robespierre, and good, Danton. Early in the film, when Danton comes back to Paris, you see the guillotine, and mm -hmm. that becomes a specter hanging over the necks and the heads of everybody in this movie. Anytime anybody disagrees or goes against the government, you can see that blade shining hanging over them. That's the sense that I got all through this fascinating picture. Yeah, there's a sense of terror that hangs oh. over this movie, as you say, the way the guillotine hangs over Danton's neck. And, and that is a very powerful thing, particularly when you realize that Vida is talking about the terror in his native Poland. It's also not only a conflict between good and evil, but a conflict between the ideal versus the zealot. They're both revolutionaries. You're right. Somebody has perverted the revolution here. You're right. That's a really good point. Someone described this movie as a serious arty animal house because you've got on the one hand priggish Robespierre who's a real Puritan and on the other hand Danton who's a sort of John Belushi character very lively uh, really a, a sort of glutton uh, that, that never really occurred to me Neil it really didn't well, I think I, that's one of the appeals of the movie well, I found that, that's one of the reasons we like Danton you never think Danton is going to die and when he gets closer and closer to facing death you realize how horrifying it is because you never expect it to happen we should say that this, all, this film does play fast and loose with history so if you're using this as a history lesson yeah, it don't. may not be the best no, but it's cer best film certainly to, to is a film to watch for. Our next movie to watch for is The Ballad of Gregorio Cortez, a little film about a real-life tragic adventure. In the dusty town of Gonzales, Texas, back in 1901, a dirt farmer named Gregorio Cortez had a misunderstanding with the local sheriff. The sheriff was questioning Cortez about a stolen horse in English. Then the interpreter mistranslated the sheriff's question into Spanish. Then the sheriff drew his gun and killed Cortez's brother. Cortez, in turn, killed the sheriff, then took off on horseback, pursued by every available Texas Ranger in the state. The Ballad of Gregorio Cortez is not a sweeping western, despite the beauty of that last scene you saw there. No, this is an intimate little movie which humanizes this dirt-poor farmer turned fugitive. Anyone living here who speaks little or no English will immediately, of course, identify with Cortez, whose life is suddenly and forever changed by nothing more than a simple misunderstanding. He became a legend, 
But this movie shows how some legends are begun with simple incidents in ordinary men like Gregorio Cortez. True, we never get to learn much about the real Cortez himself, since he's seen mostly galloping off in a cloud of dust somewhere, and he says very little during the film. But that's probably all there really was to this bewildered, fearful man. The Ballad of Gregorio Cortez is a moving, sad little story. It's a touching, beautifully filmed movie about injustice. Well, on this one, Jeffrey, I'm going to take issue with why? you. Because I can understand perfectly why Hispanic audiences would identify with Gregorio Cortez, but to me, he's never developed as a human being. He's treated solely as a symbol. I think the appeal is wider. This is about an injustice, and I really felt for this man. I didn't feel that. Well, The Leopard, made in Italy with an international cast, was released back in 1963 with a half an hour lopped off because someone felt the film was too long. Well, this year, it's being re-released in its full, unedited three-hour version. And I think the additional footage turns an interesting film into an extraordinary one. The Leopard is set in Sicily in the 1860s during the Italian Civil War. Burt Lancaster stars as a, as a Sicilian nobleman who, amid the turmoil of social upheaval, is trying to hang on to his wealth and his position. In this scene, at a ball celebrating his nephew's marriage, Lancaster realizes that a new generation and a new class are taking over. <laughs> Burt Lancaster is magnificent in this Italian film, and I wish I could show you a clip where he actually speaks, but the problem is that the film was dubbed in Italian, it's subtitled, it was made in widescreen cinemascope, and the subtitles, in this case, will not fit on your television screen. Now, I'm not going to pretend that The Leper is like a Clint Eastwood picture. It doesn't care much about action. What it does care about is how people behave, actually how Lancaster behaves, how he maintains appearances in a dying aristocratic world that's surviving on appearances. And Lancaster, as I said, is brilliant, even sweats elegance. The Leopard is long and deliberate because it concentrates on the smallest details and etiquette of aristocratic life. It wants us to feel how important these details are to a man like Lancaster and how the gradual decline of etiquette signals the end of his class. And that's why, to me, the extra half hour only adds to the film's drama. The Leopard isn't exciting, but its elegance and its dignity do make it exhilarating. You know, I saw this back in 1963, and I remember it was long and deliberate, despite a good performance by Lancaster. How can an extra half hour change all that? Well, I think by its very length, it draws you into Lancaster's aristocratic world, and it draws you into accepting Lancaster's values, which are very different, I think, from our own values. And that's one of the signals, I think, of, of a good film. I do recall it's an exceptional performance by Lancaster, and I guess the film deserves to be seen again in its entirety to see if the extra half hour really makes the picture complete. Yeah, I, I think this is a film of great virtues, and we've talked about a number of films on the show that we think our viewers ought to see. Uh, the first one that we looked at, Experience Preferred but Not Essential, is a film of small virtues. I mean, it's just a light airy, forgettable, I'm afraid, uh, British comedy. But still likable, and there's nothing... Very likable. And there's nothing small about the emotions in Carmen. They come at you, and they pulsate from the f f first part of this picture to the end. This picture will knock you over. And Danton is a wonderful piece of propaganda, and as I said before when we talked about the movie, it is at base a really good... Uh, contest between good and evil, and, and it works on that level. And I, for one, love the Ballad of Gregorio Cortez, about an avoidable tragedy, a sorrowful, sad little story beautifully filmed. Well, that's our Movies to Watch for special. We hope you'll keep an eye out for these films, and if you can't find them, check with your local film society. They'll help you. And until next time, save us the aisle seats.